cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick. And it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. First, you notice a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. I don't know if you've ever experienced that when you've been driving down the road, in perhaps a mountainous region, and you see a city that's up on a hill, and it's in the nighttime, and all their lights are on, and that glow goes out for miles and miles and miles. You see that city, you know it's there, and it cannot be hid because of that light. Now in verse 16, he says, Let your light so shine before me. Do you see what he's telling us? We have an example that goes out. We have a light that other people see, and it cannot be hid. They're going to know the kind of person we are. They're going to know the kind of Christian we are by that light that goes forth. He says, let your light so shine before men. So, or in what manner? How does it shine before men? And I think so often we look at this passage and we're thinking about being a good Christian and setting that good example, and that's right. That if we're living the right way, that other people will see that, and that's right. But it's got to be more than that. It's got to go out with what we do, with our actions. Notice he says, let your light so shine before men that they may see what? Your good works. There's that light shining forth because of our actions, because of the service that we give to others. Our faith is shown. It is demonstrated. And it can be so bright that that light can go forth and people see that and they are drawn to that, just like moths to a flame. And in the world in which we live, that is so darkened by sin. I mean, some of you who are older, you can, you can remember back, and you can see how times have changed, and how evil things have become. Sin is all around us, worse now than ever, and it's dark. It is black. But there's a light. There's that which shines forth, and others who are groping in that darkness, they're looking for that light, they're looking for that escape, for that place of safety, and that's what we're to do, to shine forth our life, to show forth those good works. And notice it's not for our glory, but for the glory of God. So how can we shine our lights brighter? How can we do more to bring glory to God? Let's break it down into two basic steps. Number one, we need to boost our inward spirituality. And number two, we need to boost our outward service. All right, let's look at the first one. Boost our inward spirituality. How can I grow? How can I be more spiritually zealous for the Lord? How can I be stronger in my faith? Well, first, we need to be filled with a knowledge of God's Word. In Acts 20 and verse 32, you might remember what Paul said to the elders of Ephesus. He said, And now I give you into the care of God and the Word of His grace which is able to make you strong and to give you your heritage among all the saints. And so he says, I'm giving you into the care of God's word, the grace of that word, and what is it going to do for you? It's going to make you strong. It begins within us, feeding ourselves upon God's word. 
1 Peter 2 and verse 2 says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. See, the same idea, it's about growth. The more of God's word that we take in, the stronger we can be. So what should we do? Well, we need to take advantage of every opportunity we have to get more of God's word. Whether we're talking about through sermons or Bible class or area gospel meetings, lectureships, bulletin articles, tracts, we need to always be looking for more of God's word to fill up in our hearts and minds. Think about now as well, at this time of year, this is a great time. If you're not on a Bible reading schedule plan, you know, the New Year's right around the corner. That's a perfect time to begin that. Make it a point in your daily life to be reading God's Word. And it can be so helpful to have one of those schedules and say, okay, uh, today I'm supposed to read Matthew chapter 1. And you find that quiet time when you can sit there and study God's Word and you can read through that text and you do it every day. Continue through the Bible and you learn more and more and it makes you stronger. It boosts that inward spirituality. 2 Peter 3 and verse 18 says, But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And there it is again, growing. It's about growth. It's about not staying where we are. And you say, well, Russell, I know my Bible. I study my Bible. Great. That's wonderful. Now do more. Push yourself to do more, to learn even more, to read the Bible even more. Fill yourself up with God's Word. That's how we're going to grow our faith. Romans 10 and verse 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. That's how you develop faith, through God's Word. What else do we need? If we're going to boost our inward spirituality, we need to fill our lives with prayer. If you look over at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, I want you to look at 17. It's a short verse. I know you know it. I want you to show you a little something extra here. 1 Thessalonians 5 and verse 17 says, Pray without ceasing, that we are always to be in the mind to pray. But do we understand that it is God's will that we be a people of prayer? Look at verse 18. Sometimes we don't read that one. Verse 18 says, In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. And so you put it together, pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. That we're to be thankful for what we have. So obviously we're going to be praying to God. And he says, that's the will of God. That's what he would have us to be. A people that are thankful and those who are thankful, they're going to be doing what? They're going to be praying. They're going to be praying to God all the time and thanking Him for the blessings that we enjoy. Notice something else. In Ephesians chapter 6, where we are commanded to put on the whole armor of God. And as Paul is going through this list of the equipment that the Christian soldier should wear, Towards the end, verse 17, he says, Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. And sometimes we stop there and say, Well, there it is. That's the, what the soldier is supposed to have. But verse 18, he says, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit. And so, yes, he's talked about those different parts of the armor that we are to wear. But then he says, pray. Pray always with all prayer and supplication. If that's to be a part of the Christian soldier's life, that tells us what a strength that is as we fight our battles in our day-to-day -day life. Do we ever struggle with things? Are there things that discourage us and get us down and are kind of hard to face? What do we need to do? Pray. Pray. That's what the soldier does. 
We need to be people of prayer. Prayer is so valuable. In James 5 and verse 16, the latter part of that, you might notice James 5 and verse 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Effectual fervent. Now that's two words in the King James Version. In the original language, it's, act, it's actually just one. They've taken one word and they've broken it up into two. Uh, the original word in the, in the Greek is energio. Energio, from which we get our word energy. <laughs> energy, energio. And so you see what it's saying. The effectual fervent prayer, that prayer which puts forth energy and power, what does that do? It says it availeth much. In other words, it's effective. It is a strength. It is a force. Why? Because there's energy into it. There's power into it. God wants us to be a people of prayer. And if we're going to boost our inward spirituality, we're going to be praying without ceasing. But we're also going to be filled with love. Biblical love is pure, it is powerful, it is productive. In 1 Peter 1 and verse 22, he says, Now that you have obeyed the truth, and you have purified your souls to the love of your brothers, sincerely you must love one another intensely and with a pure heart. So when you think about us as a Christian family, and now that we've obeyed the gospel and we've become one in this family, we are going to have deep love one for another. It's going to be intense and it's going to be pure. We're going to be caring so much about each other and their lives and the things that they're facing because of that love that we have. And if we don't have that, a love that does not exist in our Christian life, that's an empty life. You can't be spiritual. You can't be strong without that component of love. In 1 Corinthians 13, verse 3, it says, If I give away all that I have, in other words, being very benevolent, if I give away all that I have, and if I deliver my body up to be burned, talking about sacrifice, but if I have not love, I gain nothing. <laughs> nothing. Love has to be a part of our life. If we're going to be spiritually strong and we're going to boost that, it's got to be love. So we talk about not only the knowledge of God's Word and the prayer that's to be in our lives, the love that's to be in our life, and you say, okay, well, I'm adding these things, I'm getting stronger each and every day. So I can do that. And we can, but we've got to watch out for something. Because the devil's going to try to stop us. This world in which we live makes it hard to do that. If you look at James 1 and verse 27, James 1 and verse 27, it says, Religion that is pure and undefiled before God the Father is this, to visit the orphans and the widows in their affliction and to keep oneself unstained from the world. You see, as we're trying to do these good things and boost ourselves spiritually, we're trying to do what's right, that world and the sin that is in the world is attacking us. And so we've got to keep our lives pure. If we're going to have that good influence, if we're going to be able to do those good things, we've got to be living the right kind of life. That spirituality has to be seen outwardly. And that kind of brings us to the next point. Remember the first part of this, we're going to boost our inward spirituality. But when we do that, when we're filling ourselves up with the light of God's Word, it begins to shine forth. It comes out of our lives and others see it. And that's when we begin to boost our outward service and what we provide to others. We need our faith to show. And it's got to be bright. And it's got to be strong. It's got to be on fire. Do you remember the warning that Jesus gave to the Laodiceans? 
In Revelation chapter 3 and verse 16, he says, Because you are lukewarm and neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. He said, you're just lukewarm. And I'm afraid sometimes we get like that. Not intentionally, not that we want to do that, but maybe we just get discouraged or we get busy. We're not as focused as we should be. And then we just kind of become lukewarm. It's not that we don't still love God, we do. It's not that we don't still love Christ, we do. And love the Bible, we do. But we're not letting it fire us up. We're not letting it provide the zeal that it should for us to serve the Lord and to do things in the service of the Lord. You say, well, how do we see that? How do we show that? Well, one way is coming together to worship. What a great opportunity it is that we can assemble together as brothers and sisters in Christ, like-minded concerning what is really important in this life, and we can worship our God, and we can draw strength one from another. What a blessing that is. But if we don't do that, if we neglect that, not only does it hurt others, it hurts our brethren, we're hurting ourselves. We're growing weaker. Hebrews 10 and verse 25 says, Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Notice that. Not neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some. I think it does become a habit. You miss one time and, and you feel so bad about it and you feel so guilty. But then the next time you miss, it's a little bit easier. The next time, a little bit easier. And we just kind of fall into a habit of not coming together to worship. And when we do that, how can we encourage? How can we be encouraged? We need to come together. We need to be strengthened. We should come together to worship our God, and our worship should be spiritual. It should be scriptural. John 4 and verse 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. We come together and we praise our God together. And it builds us up. It strengthens us. So we're coming together. We're getting encouraged. We're being built up, but it needs to spread to others. We need to put our love to work for the Lord. If you look at Acts chapter 8 and verse 4, notice how when the early church faced difficulty, how they responded to that. Now, I know we, we don't face the difficulty that they did back then. Back then, they were dragged off to prison just for their beliefs, for their faith. Some were being put to death just because of their faith. And you say, well, we don't have anything like that. That's true, not to that extent. But don't we face problems? Don't we face persecution? And shouldn't we respond in the right way to that persecution? In Acts 8 and verse 4, Therefore, they that were scattered abroad because of that persecution... They went everywhere preaching the word. Preaching. When we meet with hardship, how do we respond to that? Preach the word. Be more intent, more zealous to reach the lost. Have a love for the lost souls and bringing them the good news of the gospel. Remember when Jesus met the woman at the well, the woman of Samaria, in John 4 and verse 28, when she knew that this was Christ, she couldn't wait to tell others. In verse 28, the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men, Come, see a man which told me all things that ever I did. Is not this the Christ? She couldn't wait to go tell others. We need that kind of heart. The kind of heart that loves the lost, cares for their soul, wants them to have salvation, is willing to share with them the way of truth, that's the wise way. 
Proverbs 11 and verse 30, the fruit of the righteous is the tree of life, and he that winneth souls is wise. Let me tell you something we can do right now, as a matter of fact. This time of year, when we are able to see extended family members because of the holidays, they're coming to see us, or we're going to see them, we're together with family and friends, that's an opportunity. Some of our family members aren't members of the church. Maybe some of them aren't even spiritually minded at all. It gives us an opportunity to plant the seed, to talk to them about how great God is and how good their life can be in Christ and how they can be blessed. We can be a blessing to their life just by sharing that good news with them. We also need to be passionate about working for the Lord. Eager and zealous to do more for God. And every one of us has something we can do. Every one of us has a talent that can be used in the Lord's church. We just simply need a mind to do it. Nehemiah 4 and verse 6. So built we the wall, and all the wall was joined together unto the half thereof. For the people had a mind to work. They were ready to work, and so they were able to accomplish that great goal of building the walls around Jerusalem. We have to be ready to do those good works, to do those things. Ephesians 2 and verse 10, For we are His handiwork, created in Christ Jesus for good works. Now notice what that is saying. <laughs> we are His handiwork. We are His creation. And this is not talking about man being created in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, it says we are his handiwork created in Christ Jesus. It's talking about our obedience to the gospel. It's talking about us becoming Christians, created as Christians in Christ Jesus. For what purpose? The verse says, for good works. That's what we're supposed to be all about. Seeking and saving those that are lost, taking up the mission of Christ, and doing good works works. We must be excited about those good works that we can do. In Titus 2, verse 13, it says, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And notice this, verse 14, who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works. Purify unto himself a peculiar people. Now that word peculiar there doesn't mean odd or strange, though I'm sure some of us are. Don't look around. Peculiar means purchased by Christ. We are a people of his possession. He owns us. We are a peculiar people, a people of his own possession, zealous of good works. Because he bought us, because he gave his life for us, he was so giving, now it's time for us to give. The service that we can give to others, the love that we can give to others. I believe that we can be a strong, active, vibrant, growing church. And you say, well, we are. And you're right, we are. But we can do more. There's more that we can do. And it begins with each one of us as individuals, growing ourselves spiritually. We have to prepare ourselves for that service. Let us boost our inward spirituality so as to boost our outward service. It begins in our own hearts. If you're here tonight, if you're struggling, you say, my faith is not as strong as I would like it to be. My light is not shining like I wish it would. We would love to assist you. We'll pray with you. As brothers and sisters in Christ, we can all relate to that because we've all gone through that. We've had those times when we've been down, 
We've been depressed. We understand what you're going through. Let us put our loving arms around you and pray with you. If you're not a Christian, why not become one tonight? Why not obey the gospel and give your life in service to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Be baptized tonight for the remission of your sins. Become God's child. If we can help you, please come as we stand and as we sing.